There's John Black, super chemist. Here to show you how to make benzoyl alcohol from a food preservative. <coughs> On the last video, I showed you how to make methyl benzoate or ethyl benzoate. Really doesn't matter. I chose methyl benzoate for this because when you make this benzoate ester, uh, you're going to have to dry the alcohol, you know what I mean, to do an esterification. And methanol pretty much comes, you know, water free almost. You throw a little bit of magnesium sulfate in there and dry it up real easy. Whereas ethanol takes a while to dry up. So you might as well use methyl benzoate. Here's the formula for it methyl benzoate, four uh, moles of sodium, and four or molecules of uh, ethanol. And then this will break apart, and you'll have a, whatever's on this. You know, this is a methyl group, so you get methanol. This is a benzyl group, so you get benzyl alcohol. The uh, mechanism I have right here, okay, here's your methyl benzoate, and here's your sodium. Sodium is an electron donor, right? What's positive over here? The carbon on the carbonyl, because there's two oxygens there. They're electronegative. They're hogging up the electron density. So that carbon's positive. So the uh, sodium metal deposits an electron on there. See, it's right there. Now when that happens, the double bond, the electrons from the double bond, they jump up on top of the oxygen and make it negative, okay? I'm trying to distribute the uh, electron density more more evenly, you know what I mean? So that jumps up to get your negative negativity up there. Now your ethanol, which can be any, well, I wouldn't say any, but can be more than just ethanol. It could be methanol, uh, isopropanol, n-propanol, uh, but it has to be a proton donor, okay? Uh, I chose ethanol for this mechanism. So it protonates onto that negative oxygen there, and this is what you end up with. You still got your electron of sodium gave. Now you got, uh, you almost got your uh, benzoyl alcohol right there, kind of. So anyways, this just keeps repeating itself over and over, this step. It repeats it four times. That's why you need four of each of these, right? All right, so you still have your um, extra electron there, and this is a, you almost have your benzoyl alcohol. So anyways, this just repeats four times. That's why you have the four moles, right? Four moles of sodium and four moles of ethanol. So it's going to happen four times. Again, he adds a electron, single electron to right here. And why? Because there's a single electron there. This is like a free radical. It doesn't want to be that. So it wants to have, it'd rather be negative than be a free radical, okay? So it adds the electron there, and now you have negativity. Again, it's going to, just like up here, it's going to protonate, right? Now this right here, I'm unsure of. I'm not sure what really goes on here to get it from here to there, okay? I'm unsure about this one step. But this is the way I think of it. I think this proton here gets transferred to this, right? And this bond swings down and makes a double bond there, okay? So now you'd have your proton on here to have your methanol. This double, this bond comes down to make a double bond, right? See how it kind of looks like benzaldehyde? And then you have your benzaldehyde. Then it does it again. The sodium does an electron transfer. Uh, there's the electron. And again, the double bond jumps back up. You know, the electrons from the double one jump up to make the oxygen negative. Again, we protonate with the alcohol, and we end up with this, right? Sodium, again, it wants to, you know, this is free, it'd rather be negative than a free radical. So it donates another electron, and you end up with this. Now remember, uh, benzaldehyde, because of the double bond, it only has one hydrogen. This has a single bond to the hydroxy group, so it needs two hydrogens. So it donates another hydrogen to make that two hydrogens and also make this molecule neutral instead of negative. And what do you end up with? Benzyl alcohol. Okay. Now, I want you to read this and look at it very carefully. It says, doing this experiment has a big risk for fires. 
Okay. Uh, this was the only method of doing the anester reduction to make alcohols um, before, like lithium aluminum hydride or uh, sodium, uh, I think borohydride. Uh, before those hydrides or whatever, this is the way it was done. But you had a big chance of getting, you know, starting a fire with this experiment, right? Now I want you to look at these two formulas here in orange, the one on the top and the one on the bottom. Okay. And those I got either off the internet and they were from, you know, actual scientists or whatever, chemists who were doing, you know, <clears throat> this was their thing, okay? So these really exist. I didn't make these up. <clears throat> uh, this first one uses Na sodium SG. Uh, that I suppose is, I mean, stage one. Uh, 15 equivalents. Meaning 15 equivalents compared to this, 1 to 15 ratio. Methanol they're using instead of ethanol. Uh, they're adding it over a five minute period, and they're using 26 equivalents of, I'm guessing, the benzo, the uh, methyl benzoate. <clears throat> Their uh, <coughs> solvent is THF, 10 degrees Celsius, 35 minutes. So basically they're saying they got their sodium benzoate, or their uh, methyl benzoate, and they put the sodium in, in the form of a sodium SG, and then they add, and they have a, you know, that in THF, and then they add in the methanol over a five minute period and just wait, wait 30 more minutes, you know, stir it up, I guess. It doesn't say stir it, but I would, I would stir it. <laughs> um, THF, that's tetrahydrofuran. Uh, if you look over here, you'll see THF is that. Well, diethyl ether is this right here. You can see they're the same exact molecule. The only difference is, is this carbon and this carbon are connected together by a bond, making it into a ring. That's the only difference between THF and ether, diethyl ether. So you can always, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time, if it says THF, you can use ether. Now this one down here is another one. Now it only uses, instead of... 15 and uh, 26, it's using 4.5 equivalents. Uh, it's using sodium D15, and it's using isopropanol, I'm guessing that's isopropanol. Instead of THF, it's using hexane. Instead of 10 degrees, it's at zero. And five to 10 minutes are doing the reaction, that's all. They're done, that's how quick it is. Now, why, why does this use 15 equivalents of sodium? And methanol, and this only uses 4.5. I don't know. Is it because the sodium D15 is a lot better than the sodium silica gel up here? Or is the isopropanol a better proton donor than the methanol is? I don't know. I doubt very likely it has anything to do with the... Uh, solvent. If I had to pick between THF, you know, diethyl ether or uh, hexane, I would pick hexane. This is, reaction is very good reaction. You're supposed to get very high yields. I'm guessing 90% or above. Everything needs to be anhydrous because um, sodium, you know, reacts with any kind of water. You know what I mean? And that's the whole reason you might be saying, what's this sodium SG mean? Or what's this sodium D15? That's just a dispersion method for the sodium, okay? It retains the reactivity, but it keeps the reactivity rate. It retards it so that it's so slow that you don't have to worry about fires or things exploding, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm going to do a separate video about uh, the sodium SG. Um, because there's just so much information. But I will do a video about all the stage or uh, phases that the uh, sodium uh, silica gel can come in, what kind of silica gel to get, you know, what size pores, what type zeolite, uh, what mesh uh, you would need, or the best, you know what I mean? You can use anything, but if you want it to be the best, you know, I'll tell you that. I'm just going to get, this is a generic thing, don't, you know, take this, you know, there's a lot more than this, but let's just 
give you the generic uh, method here. You just take some sodium metal, and this says for stage one. So let's, I don't know about sodium D15. I don't know how to make it. <clears throat> it's just a different dispersion method of, uh, you know, putting the sodium in some kind of medium. I don't know what the medium is. It might be silica gel. I don't know, or a different medium, or a different medium method. I don't know. But up here it says stage one or, or uh, phase one. Uh, so this is how you make phase one, all right? You get sodium, metal, uh, you get silica gel, which is just sand, a special form of sand, silicon dioxide. And you get some kind of inert atmosphere, because you know how sodium reacts with oxygen from the air real quick. You know what I mean? So you want to have some kind of argon, uh, nitrogen, helium. Although helium, if you buy it at the store, like the party store where you blow up balloons and you buy helium, that helium is not pure at all. I would never use that. <clears throat> um, but argon you can get at a uh, welding place where they, you know, they have acetylene and torches and stuff like that. Anyways, they sell the argon. Anyone can buy it. It's a noble gas, so it doesn't, you know, it's not very reactive with stuff. Uh, so you put these two together, right? You have them dry. You make sure that you dried out your silica gel, and uh, you basically just mix them together. And you can either melt the sodium first, or you can mix them together and melt the sodium after. Uh, but if you melt the sodium first, you need to heat up your silica gels to 100 degrees, so that you know you're not putting in cold silica gel into hot metal, liquid metal. <clears throat> Anyways, you just put them together, heat them up to 150 C. And soon you'll realize, you'll be like, oh, wow, it's making the sodium SG. Uh, because it's like a, it turns it kind of blackish, like a black powder. Um, but that's how easy it is to make. Um, I don't suggest anyone do this experiment without doing this, uh, making the sodium SG. I, I don't suggest doing it with just sodium. I'm going to try it with just sodium. But, uh... You know, I'm not very smart when it comes to stuff like that. Anyways, here's the two ways I'm going to do it. First, I'm going to try it with the, the uh, methyl benzoate and isohexanes that I can get from my electronics cleaner at uh, like Radio Shack or wherever. Uh, get the sodium, just sodium metal, and I'm going to mix that all together, and I'm going to drip in the methanol over a a five minute period the methanol will be my proton donor and then I'll start for 30 minutes and see what I made if I made anything or if I didn't do a fire you know what I mean see what happens uh, then the next time I'd probably do the same thing only I'd make the sodium silica gel uh, stage one and do the same thing drip in a methanol over a five minute period start for 30 minutes both times I'll keep it you know, between zero and five degrees Celsius, and then I'll go make the second stage sodium silica gel, and then the third stage, and etc. And sooner or later, I'll figure out how to how to do it. Keep in mind, I've never done this experiment, so I don't know. You know, I could be missing safety issues. Um, you know what I mean? So keep that in mind. Anyways, you all have a great day, and always remember, science is great.